All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Um, this is a session uh, about the uh, Google Summer of Code this year within AGL. Uh, we had two students, uh, Sukhin Ton Chakravati and Malik Talha. And here we present their Google Summer of Code projects. I'm Jan Simon Müller. I'm the lead mentor for uh, uh, GSOC within AGL. And um, I did uh, work with our two students throughout the year. Um, one is Malik Tala, and uh, the other student was uh, Sukhinton Chakravati. They did prepare. Um, presentations and I will show these now. Hello everyone. My name is Malik Talha Saeed and I am from Pakistan. I did my bachelor's in computer science from National University of Computer and Emerging Sciences. During my four years at university, I have always been interested in uh, AI-based uh, applications, mainly language models and uh, image-based models. Uh, apart from that, I have actually also worked on web-based uh, stuff and desktop-based development. Uh, you can find my personal projects uh, on my GitHub account. Uh, apart from that, this year, I participated in Google Summer of Code as a contributor for Automotive Grade Linux. Uh, you can reach me out at my personal email, which is uh, shown here. Uh, as part of uh, my GSOC project uh, can be summarized uh, as a voice assistant, uh, which is basically a combination of a Flutter app uh, and a Python based gRPC server. So my project is categorized mainly into three main stages. Uh, first one is converting voice to text. Uh, the second one is uh, text to intent. Uh, and the third one is intent to action. Uh, I'll explain these uh, stages in greater detail in coming slides. Uh, apart from that, I have also implemented a customizable wake word detection capability. Uh, customizable here means that you can actually choose any specific word, phrase, or a sentence to act as a wake word. Uh, in this project, we, are, we also did uh, VOSC integration to convert voice to text. Uh, this was done as part of last year's GSOC project by Aman. Uh, this year, we integrated uh, the SNPs and Raza intent engine to extract intent from the voice commands. Uh, before getting into any other details, I'll uh, first like to explain the uh, project architecture. Uh, as you can see, uh, here is our automotive grade Linux, uh, in which we actually have our Kuxa server running, our voice assistant app running, and our voice agent service running. The user interacts with the voice assistant app. And the voice assistant app has two modes. One is the wake word mode and the second one is the manual mode. Uh, when the user chooses the wake word mode, uh, our voice agent service actually uh, spawns a GST, GStreamer pipeline. This pipeline continuously runs in the background and it continuously processes audio buffers and chunks. It will continue processing uh, until the wake word is detected. Uh, and as soon as the wake word is detect detected, we clean up this pipeline and send the response to our assistant app, uh, or in this case, gRPC client, that the wake word is uh, detected. Uh, th this was the wake word mode. We have another mode called manual mode. Uh, in manual mode, the user uh, uh, starts the recording by pressing a button on our assistant app. And then as soon as the user uh, presses the start recording button, we create a GStreamer pipeline. We continuously record audio until the user presses the stop button. Then we clean up that pipeline and then we use the voice or the audio that was accumulated during uh, the pipeline's run. We convert it into text using VOS Caldi. Then we extract the intent. For this, we can we have two available intent engines. One is SNPs and the other one is Raza. We can use either one of these. That depends upon the request made by the client. Uh, the client has an option to choose between SNPs or Raza. Uh, when we have the extracted intent in a proper structured form format, we then map this intent to the VSS signal. And then we finally use the Kuxa client to actually execute this intent. Uh, the Kuxa client communicates with the Kuxa server to execute this intent or perform any relevant operation on it. So this was the main project architecture. 
now let's go through the project features uh, first of all this project is highly extensible and customizable uh, meaning if in, i mean in case if you want to add more intents in future uh, or stuff like that what you can do is simply switch the uh, trained models on and our mapping files and then you'll be able to extend this application without changing the underlying code we'll come back to this later on uh, to see how exactly it's extensible and customizable uh, apart from that it is capable of giving highly accurate results if provided adequate compute resources uh, meaning if you choose to uh, if you choose bigger models then uh, obviously you'll get better results uh, but for that you'll need more ram and disk space uh, the third point is that uh, it is a single grpc python server and it provides all the functionality from recording a voice command to executing that command uh, and this uh, python server is uh, capable of running in the background of your operating system and it can run as a background process and um, any number of applications can uh, communicate with it even concurrently uh, uh, we also use gstreamer pipelines for voice recording uh, and we have a flutter ivi app to communicate with the grpc python server uh, this app is actually just made to test out our uh, the main the voice agent service basically this grpc python server is mainly the voice agent service now i'll explain the three stages of this project the first one is voice to text uh, in this stage uh, we are using uh, wasc to convert our audio to text uh, wasc uh, provides multiple supported uh, models and uh, different model sizes for different languages uh, in order to set up a uh, in order to run a minimal project uh, if you have like constraint on your resources and uh, ram size you can use the smallest model uh, that requires uh, around 50 mb of disk space and 300 mb of ram at run time uh, and if you actually want more accurate uh, results uh, on voice to text conversions then you can use a bigger model uh, that will uh, require around 2 gb of disk space and around 6 gigs of ram uh, moving on to our second stage uh the text to intent stage so this stage is kind of important after we convert our audio to text now we uh, we, we cannot directly execute this text we need some a mechanism of a sort so that we can uh, extract information from this text uh, the kind of a structured data so that we can use it to execute it or tell our uh, uh, application what action to perform so for this purpose uh, we have integrated two intent engines one the first one is snips and the second one is raza so talking about the features of snips uh, snips is a really lightweight engine uh, it uses uh, scikit-learn library as its backend for performing ml related operations uh, it is easy and trained to use uh, the downsides are uh, that it is less customizable and at the same time it's less popular however uh, it has a really uh, optimal resource usage like for constraint uh, for the environments that are uh, constrained based on resource usage snips is only going to take around 300 uh, mb of ram to run Uh, the second choice is raza raza is heavier uh, it is highly customizable it uses tensorflow uh, as its backend and it's highly popular these days and it's also easy and uh, easy to train and use uh, raza uses around 1 to 1.5 gb of ram uh, at run time but raza provides us with a lot of options like we can even choose our training pipeline flow and stuff like that uh, in order to get more details about how raza works how you can train the model you can look at the official documentation of raza it is pretty well laid out the third stage of our uh, the third stage and the final stage of our project is uh, intent to action so this is a stage where we actually use the structured data the extracted intent and then execute this uh, using kuxa client so for this purpose we have a mapper a custom mapper designed but this mapper does is it consumes uh, our json structures that our vss json structures that we actually define initially to uh, execute our extracted intent uh, currently we only support three actions uh, increase decrease and set so the thing here the, the thing how this mapper works is for, we have two files uh, two json files the first file in the first file we actually define what uh, specific intent maps to what specific vss signal and in the second file we actually explain all of those vss signals as you can see for example here uh, i have explained about the vehicle uh, cabin infotainment media volume intent and i have actually provided all these details these are required by each and every intent we have to provide them so an overview as as an overview you can see we have uh, set the default value the default fallback factor the default change factor we have also defined all the actions 
that can be used on this specific intent. Uh, and we also have defined the values block here. The values block, as you can see, we can uh, perform, like define the lower bound, upper bound, any values that we want to ignore, any additional value that we need and stuff like that. Uh, now moving forwards toward the next uh, uh, step in order to set up this project. If you are like interested in setting up this project locally on your system, you can easily do that. We actually, I, uh, I actually have placed a really uh, comprehensive documentation on the official uh, docs uh, of Automotive Grid Linux. You can go there and see. And apart from that, uh, you can also find a readme file for this Meta Offline Voice Agent layer. This is actually, uh, this layer can be found under the Meta AGL Devil layer. Uh, in order to like, uh, set up a really minimal uh, uh, in order to make a really minimal setup of, of this project uh, you will need around 250 mb of disk space and uh, 3 gigs of ram but if you like want really highly accurate results and a proper setup for that then you will uh, need around 2.5 gig of uh, disk space and 10 gb of ram uh, now i'll uh, I, this JSOC project was uh, a really great opportunity for me. I learned a lot of new things uh, in a really short span of time. Uh, I was able to learn about the Yocto project uh, within this uh, five to six months that I worked with this JSOC project. I was also, uh, I also learned how to make uh, servers using the gRPC protocol. I also got a know-how about the Flutter apps and how we like do state management in Flutter and how we create apps in Flutter. Uh, I also learned about uh, how back, background services in operating system work. Apart from that, I also got a knowledge about Kuxa Wall, Data Broker and Server. And I also learned about how to make uh, contributions to open source projects. Uh, future work for this project that the things we can do to improve this uh, project is we can uh, extend the GRP server to return more personalized responses. Because currently, if you uh, issue a command to the uh, uh, voice assistant, it will uh, return a templated response back, like stuff like that, that successfully set the value or successfully executed your command. We can make it so that it returns return more personalized uh, responses. Uh, we can also, right now in our current setup, we have a really minimal uh, intent model and voice model trained for this purpose is like currently our uh, model only caters uh, three or four intents right now, but this can be easily extended. Uh, and the third thing that we can improve is we can actually enhance our assistant app for better integration into the AGL operating system. Because for now you actually have to open the app and, and the app has to be opened in order to work like for the wake world and also for issuing commands. But in future we can make it so that it continuously runs in the background and the user can issue commands and it will then process those commands and execute them. Uh, I want to give special thanks to my mentors. Jan Simon, Scott Murray, and Walt Miner. These guys were there. Uh, they, they were always there to help me out whenever I got stuck. Uh, and they provided a lot of uh, insight into our existing automotive grade Linux infrastructure and stuff like that. Uh, and I learned a lot of things thanks to them. Apart from that, I'll also thank the entire automotive grade Linux community for giving me this opportunity and being uh, and being always always there whenever I needed them. Now it's time for a live demo of my project. So now I'll start with the demo. As you can see, I have the voice assistant app running here. I also have the voice agent service running here. Uh, apart from that, I also have a Kuxa data broker server running here. So let's actually get uh, the initial values here to see uh, what uh, currently values for volume and stuff like that we currently have seeded into the data broker server. So I'll first see the volume volume value as you can see it is set to 50 uh, and then I'll get the fan speed value As you can see, it is currently set to 100. So now let's try changing this value with the help of our assistant app. So as you can see at the top, we have two options for intent engine. One is the snips and the second one is Raza. If like we shift to Raza, it says uh, switch to Raza engine. And then if we go back to snips, you can see it says switch to snips engine. So now like, first of all, uh, there is a section also here, try command section. You can actually just tap any of the commands here to see if they are working or not. Uh, let's see uh, if you, if, 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 for example, we give the command decrease the fan speed by 5%. 
so let's see let's uh, tap this in issue let's see what happens as you can see it says yeah i successfully updated the intent uh, value to 95 and let's actually also verify this uh, on our uh, data broker server as you can see the fan speed value was uh, set to uh, decrease to 95 uh, just like we showed our command uh, we can also reduce the volume uh, now as you can see here in the command we only say reduce the volume we do not specify any specific value so for this purposes uh, as in my presentation i showed you uh, the, the 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 intent to action uh, stage in that stage i had a json structure where i showed you the default change factor and that default change factor was currently set to 5 so and the default fallback was also set to true so if you don't provide any value in our commands what our voice assistant does is it first checks if the default uh, fallback uh, is true or false if it's true then it will just use the default change factor here so let's issue this can you reduce the volume command as you can see it says successfully updated the intent volume control value to 45 let's uh, also verify this as you can see it set the volume to 45 so like this was like a basic demo now let's actually try by giving a voice command because it's a voice assistant so i'll press the record command here currently i'm in manual mode as you can see it's selected here so i'll uh, record the command by for example let's say let's I, i'll give it a value for volume control can you set the volume to 60 percent So as you see, it, uh, it took the command, can you set the volume to 60%? And then it says I successfully updated the intent volume control value to 60. And now let's actually verify. Let's verify here to see if it really did set it. So I do this and yes, as you can see, the value was set to 60%. So currently in this demo, I uh, I only have three intents, uh, a model, a light wind model trained on only three intents, the volume control intent, the fan speed intent, and the uh, temperature intent. So this was the first manual mode. Let's actually go to the wake word mode. So currently the wake word is set to hello automotive and then I'll issue the wake word and we'll see what happens then. Hello automotive. As you can see wake word was successfully detected. Uh, the assistant is saying wake word detected. Now you can send your commands by pressing the record button. So uh, in the earlier stage you, you could see that there was a red uh, glowing ball and it was saying uh, detecting wake word. And you can see the pipeline was created here. Uh, here the pipeline was created. It was continuously reading audio buffers and as soon as it detected the wake word it actually said wake word detected and then it returned our uh, output. So this this is actually all integrated into the automotive grid Linux. Uh, you can actually get this project. Uh, I think so it's currently in the master branch uh, under the meta offline voice agent layer. So uh, that was it for the live demo. Uh, now we'll have a QA session if anyone is uh, interested in asking any questions or stuff like that. Yeah, we'll proceed to the uh, second presentation. Hi everyone, welcome to my presentation uh, where I'll be talking about my GSOC contribution to AGL uh, where I developed a Qt5 application to simulate CAN uh, messages using kuksa.val. My name is Sachintan Chakravarti and I'm from India. I'm currently a final year student at Amity University, Noida. You can get in touch with me via mail or we can connect over LinkedIn and you can visit my GitHub profile for all my projects. And yeah, uh, I have experience as a Google Summer of Code in, uh, contributor at AGL under the Linux Foundation. And I've also worked as a HD intern at FOSSE IIT Bombay. My GSOC project was to develop a AGL de uh, demo control panel, which is a PyQt5 application, which allows the user to interact with the various demo applications that AGL has using buttons, sliders, and dials. Uh, and this is done through kuksa.val. My duration for the project was 22 weeks, and my mentors were Mr. Jan Simon, 
Mr. Scott Murray, Mr. Marty's Flat, and Mr. Walt Minor. My weekly reports are uploaded on my uh, personal blog post website, and uh, I have the code for this project uploaded on Garrett, and you can visit the AGL docs for the documentation of this project. The agenda of this presentation is uh, a project overview, what my project was all about, what it tries to solve, uh, what is Cooksar.val, how the demo setup works, what it does, and some screenshots to go over what my application accomplishes. So the project overview, what my application achieves. So it basically provides a easy to use interface, user interface for the user to interact with the various AGL demo apps uh, using buttons and dials and sliders. Um, so that they can have like a touch friendly interface with all these applications. Uh, the application is developed using the Qt framework, Qt5 framework. And uh, on the back end, it uses Cooksar.val uh, stack. Um, it also makes use of CAN messages using the PyCAN, Python CAN module. And as you can see in the uh, diagram, the application has dedicated widgets for each AGL demo app, uh, where it has its specific signals allocated for specific widgets. And all of this is handled using a Cooksar client interface and the CAN interface, which can all work over a single ethernet connection or a LAN connection to the AGL demo platform, wherever we're showcasing it on a separate board. Um, so what is Cooksar.val? So Cooksar.val is basically a client server uh, interface where you can handle vehicle information using a standardized data model, which is called VSS uh, vehicle specific signals. We're currently on VSS four uh, and it enables uh, the development of reusable and cross fleet vehicle applications. Uh, so some of the applications that AGL has, which subscribe to these signals are the instrument cluster applications, the HVAC, the steering controls are uh, used in your IVI systems and whatnot. And currently AGL is using data broker uh, as the server, which is a Rust based service for handling these VSS signals. So the demo application for my project uh, can be run as a dedicated AGL image and uh, it can also be run as a Docker container. You can see the uh, GUI using a VNC viewer and as a standard desktop application on your personal PC. The instrument cluster and the HVAC signals are transmitted using the Cooksa signals, the VSS signals and uh, the steering wheel inputs can be switched between pure CAN messages and Cooksa client uh, messages. And uh, the control panel supports both WebSocket and gRPC protocol, both secure and insecure for the AGL demo platform. And uh, the user can easily start running scripts and uh, changing the vehicle speed and the RPM for the instrument cluster application. So how does it work? Basically, after you run the main program, the application looks for the default configuration. It also has a fallback config. Uh, using that configuration file, user preferences are loaded into the uh, settings page where all the values are uh, defined. And once the user starts the service, um, using a singleton uh, class, we create an object so as to keep the instance the same across various uh, widgets that we access for the demo platform. And simultaneously, we run the subscription service on a separate thread so that any application, any values that are updated on the de demo platform, they are reflected on the control panel as well. Um, once the connection is successful, the user is notified visually and uh, yeah, and you, the user can easily navigate across these widgets to change the values, start scripts, manipulate all the concerned parameters. So by default, we launch into the dashboard 
page where you can have these four tiles to navigate between the instrument cluster page, the HVAC controls, and the steering wheel controls. And then you have the uh, configuration page. You can also handle the window controls from close, maximize, and minimize buttons. Mm. For the instrument cluster, the user can easily manipulate the indicator status for the left and right indicator. Uh, they can turn on and off the hazard lights. They can change the speed and RPM using the sliders provided. Uh, we can also manipulate the coolant temperature and the fuel level. Uh, the accelerate but button is a push down button for as long as the uh, user holds it down. Uh, the speed and the RPM are adjusted accordingly. The user can also manipulate the drive mode between parking, reverse, neutral and drive. Uh, the navigation bar at the bottom allows the user to switch between the dashboard, the instrument cluster page, the HVAC and the steering controls and go to the configuration easily. Uh, HVAC page allows us to change the fan speed and the temperature uh, for the left and the right vents for the passenger and the driver side. And when we go to the steering controls, we have access to the horn, the call controls for accept and decline, the voice uh, controls, the lane correction. Uh, on the left side, we have access to the volume uh, buttons and the media playback buttons, uh, the information button. On the right side, we have uh, access to the cruise control settings. Uh, when we go to the settings page, here is where the user uh, loads up the default configurations, whatever their preferences are, predefined into the configuration file. Or they can easily change those parameters using the fields provided for the IP address and the port. Here is where you specify where your server is running. Uh, you can also change the uh, connection mode between secure and insecure. So SSL encryption is enabled and uh, disabled accordingly. Uh, you can also switch between the WebSocket and the gRPC mode for the Cooksa client SDK. Uh, for the page settings, you can change the visibility of each widget. Uh, and in steering controls, you can switch between the Cooksa messages and the CAN messages. Uh, at the topmost, you will find the start and the reconnect button. They do as they're supposed to. You can start and stop your client. Uh, the status button shows you the connection status. When it's connected, you get, a, get, you get the connection status highlighted in green, yellow, and red to reflect the status accordingly. And uh, yeah, so for the conclusion of this presentation, uh, thanks to this uh, GSOC project, I was able to learn about uh, development of PyQt5 applications and QT5 applications in general. I got to learn about design patterns, multi-threading in uh, QT applications, CAN messages, and the Cooksaval stack, and the various development tools that are used at AGL. I got to test and debug my application on real hardware, which was a Raspberry Pi 4, which was kindly provided by my mentors, and uh, actual Canvas adapters that we also tested with. Uh, I got to learn a lot about the AGL community, its development tools, the whole workflow, and the entire pipeline. And uh, all in all, it was a wonderful experience for me. Thank you for your time. See. You. Yeah, and if you want to see the uh, uh, Suchintons uh, um, project live, then uh, this is upstairs in the showcase uh, where we have the demo set up. All right. Um, that's the conclusion of the talk. Do you have any questions about GSOC in general or about those projects? All right. Thank you for joining. <laughs>